Before I started working for PrEP in 2015, I was not part of the inner circle on the debate about ecosystem health. I was an interested ecologist and a resident of Kittery. I cared, as do many of us. And mostly what I heard about was eelgrass and nitrogen. I remember wishing that someone would take a step back so that we could see the forest for the trees. So I'd like to try and do that now. The stress and resilience section of the report, simply having a more general section like this to tie together some of the different things we're seeing in our estuaries, it's a bit of a departure from previous state of our estuaries reports. So why is PrEP doing this? The past 10 years have involved some pretty intense scientific debate and a lot of it focused on the relationship between nitrogen and eelgrass. That debate has been characterized by some very different perspectives. Therefore, since 2015, PrEP has endeavored to try to clarify some of the confusion around eelgrass and nitrogen, and at the same time, pivot our attention so that we can spend more time on the broader picture as well. So, in order to do this, we felt it was very important to use external peer review, along with our many local experts and stakeholders. Peer review is the standard in science for increasing the credibility of science. As many of you know, peer review was instrumental in getting us to rethink the numeric nutrient criteria that PREP and DES released in 2009. The Municipal Coalition and DES collaborated to engage four peer reviewers to review the 2009 report and the 2009 PREP DES report asserted a mathematical relationship between nitrogen concentrations and eelgrass health. Now, the consensus of the 2014 peer review was that the methodology in the 2009 report was not robust enough. It did not take into account enough confounding factors. So PREP built on this peer review, engaging three external reviewers with top credentials in estuarine ecology. And these reviewers engaged with many of you in the watershed to think about the many stressors that are impacting eelgrass as well as other habitats. This stress and resilience section owes its existence to the people in that process, the advisors, our local experts and stakeholders. In a way, everyone is right. All these things are happening. Slow and chronic stressors combined with quick episodic stressors and everything compounding each other making it very difficult to isolate the, the causal contribution of just one factor. The key thing we want to do in this moment is to back up for at least some amount of time and stop arguing about what is the one single worst causal factor and instead recognize that all the factors I just mentioned have combined to decrease the resilience of our system. What is resilience? Resilience is the ability of a system to withstand stress disturbance and maintain its essential characteristics. So the big picture message we want to convey is the resilience of our estuaries has declined under the weight of many stresses. Not one, not just development, not just nitrogen loading, not just coastal acidification, not just more extreme storms. All of these things are happening. Changes in each habitat affect other habitats. Changes in stressors affect other stressors. Some stressors are amenable to management, others are not. We need to address what we can. So I'd like to spend some time thinking more about resilience in general and then looking at it specifically as it applies to oysters and then to eelgrass.